In chapter 212, I learned about options and put call parity. So let's see what that's about. So a European call option means that I have the right to buy some asset S uh, at a fixed price the agreed price E at a fixed time, say capital T. So I have the right to buy the asset S at the agreed price E at time T, but I don't have to. I, I can if I want, and I don't have to. That means S of T is the asset price, E is the exercise price and T is expiration time. So at time T, what is the option worth? So if the price has gone up, so if S of T is bigger than the exercise price, then what? So the price is higher than the exercise price at the date I can buy the asset S at price E and it's worth more. So that means I made a profit. So this option was valuable and it has value, the difference, S of T minus E. Of course, life isn't always so rosy, so if S of T has gone down below the exercise price, then what? Then what's the option worth? It's worth zero. So I have the right to buy it at E, but that's a higher price than the market's saying, so I, it's worth nothing to me to have the right to buy it at that high price. Let's do a payoff function. So this is called the payoff. That's the value of the option at expiration. So the payoff, you can write it mathematically as max S of T minus E comma zero. And this works out. So if S of T is larger, then this will be positive, And you just get this as the max because it's bigger than zero. So that's the first line. If S of T is less than E, this goes negative, but the max with zero will just give zero. So that correctly gives the second line. So you can do a little little graph here. Let's use the color. So here's the exercise price. We're graphing the asset price at expiration. So if it's lower than E, the option is worthless over here. If it's higher than E, it's just S of T minus E. So it's this line going up. So this is the payoff function of a European call option. So what about a European put option? So a put option is similar to a call option. It's just the right to sell. At the fixed price E at time T. So what's the payout for that one? It'll actually be the max of E minus S of T comma zero. And what does the graph look like? So here's the E. So if the exercise price is, or if the, so here's S of T. So if the stock price is higher than the exercise price, then I have the right to sell it at this low price. That's worthless, so it's this line. If the price has gone down, then I start making money. It's this line. So that's a European put option. What about writing an option? That's also important. So every time there's a, an option, there's someone on either side. There's the writer and the buyer. 
So writing an option. So if if I write a European call option, what does that mean for the payoff function? So for the other guy that bought the European call option, they have max s of t minus e comma zero. So I'll say this is the European call. So the, the buyer has this. If I'm writing the option, it, it's a two-way street here. I get exactly the negation. I, I'm getting a payoff that's opposite of the buyer. So writing means negating the payoff. All right, now we can do put call parity. So put call parity is pretty cool. Let's change color for fun. So what if I write a European put? And buy a European call. Uh, go back to blue. So buying the European call gave this uh, payout at E, and writing the European put, what was that? That was here, and now instead of going up, it goes down, because I'm negating, because I'm writing. So there you go. So writing a European put gives this up payoff, buying the European call gives this payoff, add them together, and what do you get? You get They cross over right at E, so here's E. Get this one with the zero, and here the zero adds with the negative, and you get down here. And so you actually get just S of T. So you get, uh, then where's the intersection over here? Minus E. So this is the sum of the two graphs, S of T minus E. Now we can do a little diagram. So here, today, time lowercase t and expiration, capital T. I'll leave that there. And so we buy the call and write the put. And what happens? So at expiration, buying the call has max s of t minus e. e minus s of t comma zero. So this is the buying the call and writing the put. And we already know that these added together uh, gives s of t minus e. That's just because of this, this diagram, we convinced ourselves that's the right formula just by looking at the diagram. And then, you know, thinking ahead a little bit, we're trying to make this zero. So we're going to be doing a no, no arbitrage argument. You know, spoiler. So how do we get rid of these terms? So there's S of T so we can short the stock. So we want to end up with shorted stock here. So that'll be negative s expiration t. And here, it'll be lowercase t. So the price is changing over time. We're working backwards. And we also have e here. So this is a, a cash value. So this will be some cash position. So we want to have a positive e. OK, now we've arranged it so that the final value here sums to zero. And we have to fill in the rest of this chart. So over here, today's price of the call, we don't know what that is. So let's call that C. The put, we don't know what that is either. Call that P, and it's negated because we wrote the put. So there's a negation there. 
cash value here, cash over time, we've done that. We just have to discount it into the past. So it'll be uh, the, the interest rate and the difference of times with the negation on the interest rate to go back in time. And now by the no arbitrage argument, the cash flows are known and zero at expiration. And therefore the cash values have to be known and zero today. And so what are they today? C minus P minus S of T plus E, E to the negative R difference of times equals zero. Or equivalently, C minus P equals S of T minus E to the negative R, T minus T. There you go. This is the formula for put call parity. So this gives a direct relationship between calls and puts, the price of the options, uh, given the, the current price and the discounted interest rate, the, yeah, the cash value over time. And so this is a nice formula. So that's, that's cool. But the next question is, how do we actually get the value? So this is a relationship between calls and puts, but we want the actual prices. So in other words, how do you price an option? I think maybe that'll be later in the book.